I love the work, the craft, the design elements, especially in the custom space. I mean, that you know so well. Yeah, I mean, I was always a hobbyist with it. I got obsessed, though, with music when I was probably like 16, 17 years old. I'd already been playing guitar for a couple years, and I got just completely obsessed and, like, went to school for it, Um, learned to understand music theory, and just kind of set out on a path of doing that with my life. And I did till what... 11, 12 years ago was the end of the touring days for me. Wow. Welcome to High Octane Hustle. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And we are here with none other than... Sean Davis. (laughs) I welcome, love it. welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, first off, you guys, if you don't know this already, we're in his undisclosed location and he's hooked us up with this. I, look at this place. It's amazing. Yeah. It yeah. really is. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. We're super <laughs> stoked to, to. I like how you guys make my place look totally different than it typically it's looks. It's not us. It's the behind the scenes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're making it look amazing. Yeah, so. they're making us They're making <laughs> us look good. No, they do. It, it, I'm really impressed with what Jason and Marcel do. It looks great. It's all great. who you know. Yeah. Totally agreed. Yep. It's all who you know, friend. It's yep. all who you know. <laughs> yep. So I think we're going to start this off with like a little bit of an icebreaker. Ooh. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I'm in. I'm game. Let's do this. Since I'm closest, I'm going to help you with this. Okay. Pick a card, any card. This is our... The burning question card. All right, let's go. She seems like she's trying to point I'm just, I know, right? I'm not. I'm not. Why don't you go no. ahead and... No. Do I read the question? Well, I think you should. Okay. Without my glasses. Okay, here, we got you. We got you. Teresa can do it. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but I can see it. She can hold it Ish. for you. If you could be given the date... Of your death, would you want to know it? Hell no. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, no. that was an easy question. Um, that, it's it's all like I would focus on that every day of my life leading yeah. up to it. That would be awful. Yeah. I guess now the days that aren't that day, you'd be going, "This is I'm good today." But yeah. like, uh, no, no yeah. way. So you, I like would that. you? So do you feel like no. you live your life right now, like not worried about the next day? I live my life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> you really set me up Good for that. Life. You know you did, right? Good answer. <laughs> um, yeah, nah, man. I no. I I I have no interest in knowing that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. No way. Uh-uh. No, I agree you with just, you. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you yeah. because I. Think- I just think I'd focus on it too much. Like I I get OCD about certain things yeah. and stuff, and you know, like when I have specific dates coming up, I it's like for a month ahead of time I'm thinking about it. So. Can only imagine. Can Holy do. shit, my death date is coming in the next 48 years. I, you know, I would like to. Do zone, I have enough time? I would right? totally zone right? out on it. Nah. What else can I get accomplished? Nah. Uh-uh. Right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, I agree with you. No. I think that's that's good thought. So elaborate a little bit more on this uh, answer of you live your life a quarter mile. <laughs> I mean, total car guy, you know, response right there. So love that, you know. I'm a I, I'm one of the guys too that I, I mean one of the billions of people that love Fast and Furious, but I I love the franchise I really do. Yeah. Even as goofy as it's gotten, like taking a Pontiac Fiero into outer space wearing Jacques Cousteau diving suits, you know. I mean, it's like it's some of the goofiest stuff ever. But my neighbor over here, Dennis, builds all the all the cars. He's been building all the cars for Furious since Tokyo Drift. So it's always fun to see the cars getting built, the progress that happens, the damage that happens to them when they come back here. Um, plus the, they really do. And it's, it's, you know, yeah, there's plenty of CGI stuff in that franchise, but I tell you what, man, I mean, cause I see the cars coming back. I see when they build 10, 68 to 70 chargers, they ain't building 10 because they're, you know, granny and around out there. They're oh. beating the piss out of them. And I, and, I, and I love that they still actually do that. They go out and drive cars hard, yeah. you know, and watching what they build over there. It's really cool to see the hero car that looks really bitching, but then this is a car that we know for a fact we're going to roll this thing, you know, so all the safety precautions that go into it. So I what was it. one of the first uh, car movies that, that you kind of liked growing up? 
God, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> that makes it even worse. I'll go say, to the better one. Aloha, say, Aloha no. Bobby, and Ro- uh, Bobby and Rose, right? Yeah. That was a kick-ass movie. What but about? the one that came to mind okay. at first was, you know, prior to being Luke Skywalker. Corvette He was Summer. Corvette Summer. Yes. Awesome. So, yeah, that's near and dear to my heart, too. There you go. Do you know that Greg actually worked on that car at Corky's Custom? Really? Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. yeah, so that's a little sidebar. It's. I like that. Yeah, I mean... Well, I'll just leave it alone, but it's actually good. I won't. That's no, a great that's way to really yes. screw up a Corvette, man. That yeah, was, that's what it is. That is the he ugliest. So too. God, that's the ugliest car ever, man. I mean, it stayed in my mind forever, so you know, I suppose it did its job. I don't remember the plot line of that movie at all. No, I just remember how hideous the Corvette was. was. Yeah. That's all I remember. But and there was that it was Luke scenery. Skywalker. Yeah, there was good scenery. Right? Mm. Yeah. I think that's cool. So what actually got you started into cars? Like what is is that part of what that was? Like watching movies like that or No, I was you it? know, it was as a as a little kid, my dad always had cars. Like he was he was really into Porsche. So we had like my mom drove a three fifty six cab. My dad had a he had a speedster at one time. He had a 914 when I was a kid, which I thought was the coolest yeah. thing ever. Right. Yeah. And then my uncle also did. So between my uncle and my dad, motorcycles and cars were just such a cool, fun thing, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I loved it. I recently saw a really fantastic photo of you with a 1970 Mustang fastback in some what uh what do we call them i call some them chuck norris pants? pants you were out hosing the car <laughs> oh yeah like, is, oh yeah was i wearing my jazz shoes back then Hey, I am I a kid of the hold '80s, man. Photo far enough away. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a kid of the '80s. It. It was yeah, you were watching yeah, the yeah, car. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Over at my buddy Tim's house, I loved that car, man. And I made the brilliant choice when I was when I was starting to really get into street bikes. One of my buddies had a really kick-ass uh, Yamaha RD400, and I just thought it was the coolest thing. He had done all this great custom stuff to it, and I was smart enough to trade that car for that bike. <laughs> I mean, and we were calling this a smart move. I cannot, especially when you think today of what, you know, what a seventy fastback, and oh, that one had a three fifty one Cleveland in it too. Mm. Like I, I cannot believe I did that, but whatever. The RD four hundred was really bitching, if only. and chicks dug it. <laughs> and I mean, come on, as oh, an there 18, was a reason as behind an 18, it. 19 year old guy, see. I mean, there's one thing you're yep, focused on, yep. you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why Greg had the 69 Z28. That's mm. how he landed. Well, I'd like to say me, but <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows that's why I went out with him. So, <laughs> like, I mean, you cool know car. that's why you went out oh, with him. Oh, I've, so. I've made no bones about it, right? Yep. So, yeah. So the motorcycle Chick, it was, huh? Chick, <laughs> chicks dig cars yeah. Yeah. and motorcycles. And, motors, and, and fast bikes, totally. And if you could do a, a wheelie thing. on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> My greatest ticket ever was doing a wheelie showing off for a girl, of course, uh, through Century City. That one went really well as I wheelied past the cop sitting there on his motorcycle and he was just shaking his head. I pulled over right away. I was yeah. smart enough to not yeah. take off running. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that turned into a exhibition of speed, mm-hmm. reckless driving, yeah. reckless endangerment. Mm-hmm. Lost my license for a year. Got in really good shape riding a bicycle. Uh, old enough to know better for sure. <laughs> this was probably, I was probably like in my late 20s. Yeah. Yeah. GSXR 750 going through on Avenue of the Stars, you know, straight up and down. The, Brilliant. The real burning. Did anyone Brilliant. catch it? <laughs> no, no, this is way before. Nah, right? I mean, somebody would have had right. to plug. I've got my camera. <laughs> right. Eat the gear back. I've got then. my handy or yeah. whatever it is. Well, the big burning question here is was she impressed never got to talk to her <laughs> oh. the the guy it was a motorcycle cop and he said you're gonna sit right here while we wait for a car to come pick it. you up yeah. and and he he sat me there in cuffs on the side of the street as friends of mine drove by and stuff and yeah they weren't stopping not a chance no no nobody wanted to see what was going on mm-hmm. with me and i i uh yeah i went you know went to the west hollywood sheriff's department and which I've spent a few hours there over the years. I haven't. It's been a long time, by the way. <laughs> so you grew long up in uh, S- Southern California, then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was born L.A., mostly lived in Orange County growing up. And then, you know, I was a musician forever. So I way back when, when I, you know, as soon as I was old enough, moved up to Hollywood and was playing like all the all the clubs up on the strip back when Gazaris existed, back when I had hair. <laughs> That's some good hair, man. Hair I got band. some great old hair band well, shots. Well, I, no- I noticed that in that picture in with that the photo. car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, dude. Yeah, I think I was blessed and then I got cursed, you know? It's like... <laughs> Yeah, but as a musician, though, you played guitar, right? Mm-hmm. And how did you find that from being an automotive to, you know, being a motorsports guy? Yeah, well, you know, the automotive thing was always more hobby based. It still technically is like I don't, you know, I don't wrench on cars. I mean, I don't. Just like being around. I mean, I got to be honest, like I like when a battery in one of the cars out here dies, I call one of my neighbors to deal with it. Like I, 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 I don't like wrenching on cars. I never did. It's always, it's more the enthusiast side. Like I love, I love the work, the craft, the design elements, especially in the custom space. I mean, that you know so well. Um, But yeah, I mean, I was always a hobbyist with it. I got obsessed though with music when I was probably like 16, 17 years old. I'd already been playing guitar for a couple of years and I got just completely obsessed and like went to school for it. Um, learned to understand music theory and just kind of set out on a path of doing that with my life. And I did till what, 11, 12 years ago was the end of the touring days for me. Wow. Thank God. <laughs> it was so- bitching until it wasn't. And then it sucked, you know, I mean, it was, it was rad being on the road until, until it wasn't. And then it was just, just awful waking up in some hotel every day and there was a shelf life oh my god there you go (laughs) i was shocked too because i never thought the day would come where i wasn't into it anymore um but it really did i mean it it and when i was done i was just done like i didn't i mean i barely play anymore every once in a while i'll pick up a guitar and play and sing because somebody asks me to sing a song but like i mean i get a guitar in the office so are you gonna play for us today and sing for us today I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If that's really it, on the huh? spot, isn't it? Right. I mean, right. I can still pick it up and do it, but it just doesn't like all. It was all I wanted to do with my life. You know, I, I used to wake up every day, spend time writing songs. Um, I had a publishing deal in Nashville, so I was out there for a while writing songs for a living. I mean, barely a living. You know, it's like you have to work an extra job or find side hustles. But like, I actually got to do that for a while my the last band i was in was called stone honey we ended up getting uh two different record deals a few different publishing deals like i actually got to the point where it looked like it was going to happen you know and and for whatever reason probably more a series of bad choices on our part business choices uh it just never flew you know like our one record sold a i don't know ten thousand units or something like that we were supposed to be the second coming of the Eagles, but we definitely didn't sell anywhere near the Eagles, you know, but yeah. So I, I, uh, I got out of that and kind of fumbled around in LA. I didn't know what I was going to do for a couple years. I, I really floundered around and it's, it's so funny. It's a series of like, I mean, I think it's real blessings to tell you the truth, but like my little brother needed help here at the shop. Cause this place used to be his private man cave where, He had probably 10 cars here, his buddy Paul and Roger, they kept a couple cars here. They were always doing things with the always evolving stuff. And so my brother gave me basically a flunky job. Like I, I would take his cars out to shows, get them washed services, stuff like that. It was really flunky stuff. I mean, my brother was so cool to give me a job. And, but what I did with all the time that I had free was I went and started making friends with guys like Steve Strope, right? I got obsessed with Strope's builds became friends with him. And I just started kind of immersing myself in the car culture that I loved the, the pro touring and resto mod world. And kind of, it was just like a snowball effect of one thing leading to another where I really felt like after all the years of music, I felt like I was finally actually on the right path that I needed to be on, you know, and, and it's been fun how it's all worked out with my storage place. This business does great. The YouTube channel, yeah, let's you talk know, about again, the YouTube channel. Me and my buddies channel. just going, ah, let's try this thing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been doing it for five years now. We're, we're just over five years. We have 430,000 subscribers, I think it is. So you've seen a lot of changes then within YouTube, the platform itself. 
and still all yeah. the time. I mean, it's constantly, you know, that, that, damn algorithm thing right you know? but you seem to i mean with four hundred and thirty thousand subscribers just knowing what the channel does and you guys if you haven't seen autotopia la on youtube you need to get to it right away yeah anyway had to throw that in there yeah, because yeah, you'll actually yeah. know what we're yeah. talking about yeah but, totally but sean you really have figured a recipe to keep your your viewers engaged and keep people talking about it and you know i've been lucky enough to be on the channel Greg's been lucky enough to be yeah, on the channel. And yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about Corvettes, like, yeah. But both of you guys, man, still, I, I like, no question, undeniably, the most intense breaking I've ever experienced in my life is with your husband. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah, friggin' yeah. car of his is, I mean, your beast. car is amazing. No, no, no. No doubt about <laughs> yeah, it. But no, that, his is that car and, and the way he drives it. And it's so funny because it's Greg. Like, Greg doesn't look like, about us. I mean, he, just, he <laughs> doesn't. Sorry, Greg. He really does. Uh, no, he's, he's just, just totally sorry, Greg. He's just mild mannered, just quiet. Yeah, Super but you put him behind the wheel very, of a car. Oh my God, he's a beast. And like, thank God I had the harnesses on, but it was so funny because after he did the first brake stop, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to tighten this stuff <laughs> down some more here. Yeah. I, I had never, yeah. but it's funny. That's That's been part of the thing for us with the channel is always shooting vehicles that we think are cool never asking any questions up front. Nowadays, the only questions I ask people in advance is like, hey, your brakes work, right? And they work really well. Yeah. And you know that no matter what, your brakes are going to work. Yeah. That's, you know, since our That's yeah. another conversation. big wad up. Right. But, um, but otherwise, I never ask questions in advance because my approach is if I learn about the car while we're shooting, then by the time the viewer's watching it, it's almost like as if we're learning about a vehicle at the same time. You right. Know? And it's yeah. authentic. It's not. Yeah. I'm not an actor. Like I couldn't, I could never go, Oh yeah, we like the way you said that, but can you do it this way? Right. And you know, it's right. like, if we get interrupted, we get interrupted. If yeah. shit doesn't work, it doesn't work. And and we're still, I swear to you, we learn constantly. The, the learning never stops. We're always trying to grow the thing and try, we're willing to risk it sometimes and try new things. Like we, we tried a series recently that we thought was a really cool concept. We did like, maybe 12 or 13 episodes of it and it just didn't fly. They were getting like 10, 15. I think the biggest view was like 40, 45,000 views, okay. which for us is not that good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, but we were willing to risk it. So now we're fighting with the algorithm and having to rebuild the momentum because we got, you know, just, yeah. well, the way the, the algorithm, as far as I understand, the way it, do, it reads you is it goes, people aren't as interested in this channel anymore. So you quit showing up in the recommended, you quit showing up over on the side while people are watching another video or even better popping up down on the bottom. So we're in that whole rebuilding momentum, but you know, gratefully the last four episodes we've put up are all cars where people go, holy shit. Nice. Yeah. You nice. know, I mean really radical cars and we've got a few that are, oh my God, we got some really good episodes on deck right now. Awesome. Yeah. I don't, oh, I'm sorry. I don't think I've seen one of the episodes where I didn't just wait what it's what amazing, is this right? yeah and you yeah. know we never you know it's a trip i mean we're gonna when when there's more budget for it we want it we definitely want to do some travel like we've done some travel shoots we were out in north carolina with uh detroit speed brad de birdie we shot with them a few years back we had to do a really cool trip to germany and shoot some wild stuff there but 99.9 .9 of what we do happens between here and orange county and yeah. we never have to leave here yeah. We never have to leave here, and we'll California never is like run. Like the auto mecca, it really, it really, really is. It's <laughs> astounding to <laughs> so me, like how we never there. run out of, we Content. never run out of custom vehicles to yeah. shoot, you know, and so, not like half-ass ones, but I mean like oh, yeah. SEMA contenders and Grand National Roadster Show contenders oh, yeah. and this weekend good guys, and you know, uh, tons of them come from here. I mean, you're talking more than fifty percent of probably what's in the country comes from Southern California. Yep. yep. So it's a lot of it's from here. Yeah. What was the first episode that you did shoot? Do you remember that car and like totally. what even like brought you to doing it? Totally. Well, one of our partners, Chris owns that car, vicious Mustang. Oh yeah. Which a lot of people know I've vicious seen, I Mustang. Do. I do. Um, it's it so it, funny it too. It is badass. Oh, it's, a, it's such a ridiculous <laughs> it is. car. It it's so is. bonkers. Yeah. So we had the, it's, it's so funny too, because when I say we didn't know what we were doing, I mean, we didn't have 
a clue of what we were doing. Paul, who's our main shooter and partner in the channel, Paul had shot like a little bit of fun video and product photography. He had never shot like what we do. I had never edited in my life. And so here we are, Paul's out shooting. I'm learning how to edit. And we just, I mean, I'm telling you, we didn't know what we were doing, but we just tried stuff. So the very first episode we shot was with Vicious Mustang. Um, can't wait, by the way, because that car's about to come back from paint. It's been in paint and body for a couple years now. Oh, really? It got hit on one of our quarantine cruises. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. It just damaged the entire left side of the car. Mm -hmm. A guy in a big truck with 40-inch tires on it uh, tried to make a lane change. And <laughs> couldn't figure out. Know. Couldn't figure out why his truck wouldn't make oh, the lane change, so he ran down the man. entire side of oh, Vicious. Gosh, yeah. I can't even imagine that. But that was what we got to start with, with us not knowing what the hell we were yeah. doing. Our first car was Vicious Mustang. And, yeah. and so it's going to be fun for us now because when it comes back from paint and body, we're going to do a full, like what we finally learned when we started to nail down our format. Right. Now we're going to be able to do our format with that car, you know, with the audience that we have. I'm, yeah. I can't wait for this. Yeah. What? What, though, inspired you? Let's back up even further. Yeah, yeah, what inspired yeah. you to do yeah. the YouTube channel? I mean, that's yeah. a huge... Th we all have an inspiration, right? So share totally. that. We were at a car event called AutoCon. Um, they, I don't think they do it anymore. It's a pri pri primarily JDM-based event. Yep. They had one... Uh, like San Diego or something? It was or? actually in L.A. They had okay. one hall at the L.A. Convention Center. Yeah. Um, so I'm up in a green room me and my buddy Chris and these two Asian guys, and we're looking through the window down into the hall. There's all these people standing in line to get their pictures taken with this guy. I have no idea who he is. And so I asked one of the Asian guys, Mike, he, he has a channel called Smurf and WRX. I asked Mike, hey, do you know who that guy is? And he said, yeah, it's TJ Hunt. And at the time, TJ had, I don't know, 100, 150,000 subscribers. His yeah. channel, you know, it was definitely a growing channel, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't huge back, yet like it is now. Yeah. Yeah. This is but like, big back then. this is probably <laughs> six, six and a half years ago, yeah. some, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I went, really? Tell me more about this. And, and Mike went on to tell me about YouTube and how TJ was generating X amount of dollars per month and yeah. how he was generating money. And I'm sitting there going, wait, tell me more about this? <laughs> yeah. Soaking it all up. Because huh? I didn't know. I, I had never, you know, I'm older, right? So I, I didn't grow up in the tech world. And, and so I had no idea. So Mike came over here and walked through my shop. I walked him over to Dennis's Fast and Furious cars and stuff like that. And, and Mike comes in here and he goes, you know, just in that walk we just did, he said, there's about three months worth of content. And, uh, and he was the one that really inspired the whole thing. And, and he told me something. And I, I've told multiple people with YouTube channels that are just getting started. Because I think this piece of information he gave me, it still holds true. He said, in my opinion, if you put a charismatic personality in front of the camera and you give good, consistent content, you have the ability to organically grow a channel. And ours has been 100% organically grown. And there was nothing, you know, charisma is whatever. It is what it is. There's, I don't think you can be taught it. You either have it or you don't. You have, there's different levels of it, certainly. All I'm saying is regarding myself, there's nothing I could do about that. I got what I got. I am who I am. But the thing that was within our grasp of control was good, consistent content. And we still hold true to that. We always try to put out the best we possibly can, and we're ridiculously consistent. We are every Tuesday, every Friday, 5 p.m., you can bank on us, and episodes going live. And sometimes, I mean, it's down to, like, our poor editors getting footage the day before. I don't care, dude. Stay up all night if you have to. That, that video, like, and, and I think it's really important with YouTube because if you're not consistent, somebody falls in love with what you do and then there's not a video for a few weeks, they might not come back. Yep. You know, they, they've yeah. found 20 other options to watch in that time and they yeah. might not come back. You know, yeah. they might, but they might not. GTS Customs Corvette Specialists. Passion is the driving force behind every design, every build. Innovation taking the client's dream car places never thought possible. Not just seductive form, but flawless function, showcasing today's technology in yesterday's classic curves in luxury and in performance. 
head over to highoctanehustle.com, shop the brands page, and check out GTS Customs Corvette Specialists. Baja Forge, it isn't just the products and it's not just a brand, it's a way of life. At an early age, traveling to Baja was one of my fondest memories. It was about venturing to unknown destinations. It was the freedom of exploration and really slowing down to enjoy the amazing world and the people we have in it. Baja Forge is about helping you embrace adventure. Baja Forge, signature vehicle builds and off-road products built to forge your own path. Visit BajaForged.com today. So it was just really, really listening to all those people that were around you and being inspired by yeah. them and what they were doing. Yeah, Mike yeah. really got me fired up on it, especially the idea that you could monetize it, which I didn't know back then you could monetize it, you know? And I mean, now we make enough money, I'm able to pay for the editor, the second the second partner in the channel. Yeah. Uh, or the second shooter for the channel, and then me and the partners, you know, I mean, <laughs> it ain't that much money, but... But it's growing, yeah. you know? I mean, we've just brought on our first channel sponsor, um, a company. I'm curious to know if you guys know this company, Liquid Molly. Yeah. You do? Uh, mostly through motorcycle stuff, too. Exactly. Yeah, they've been, been doing a lot more um, branding through them. Yeah. Yeah, that industry. They're, they're, you know, they're huge in, like, European cars. Yeah. I mean, try to watch a Formula One race and not see Liquid Molly. You know, they they line the the track with liquid Molly banners and they just came on as a sponsor because they want to start getting more access to the, the our world, the American muscle stuff, you know, right. cause most American muscle people have no idea who they are. Yeah. I mean, really don't. So that's helping, you know, to, to generate additional revenues and it's a fun partnering. They're, they're, they're really cool people and they make a, that's the best part. I, I mean, I'm sure that's part of the channel too, is like you said, like putting a, charismatic person in front. I mean, if you're finding a car person that loves their car and loves to talk about it, that right there is, is what you need. Yeah. You know? I mean, you find someone, there's a reason why they built it, you know, totally. there's something they're into and everyone loves talking about their car, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's funny. We've only had a couple times where it was hard to get information out of people. Once, yeah. once when we're filming our interview portion, once once they get used to just talking to me and sure. forget that the camera's yeah. there, it's yeah. real fun, you know, because they're they become very much themselves and they always have these great stories. Yep. You know, I mean, the the stories that come with some of these old cars yeah. are f fascinating to me, you know. And that's that's my favorite part of it is when you when you yank out a story of like, yeah, my grandmother bought this car brand new and now it's mine. You know, fifty years later, that's right. that's that's so badass. Or we shot a C10 recently where the guys, it was his uncle's farm truck. His uncle like used it to pull stumps and stuff. I mean, it was his, it was his work truck. Yeah. And this guy spent, you know, a little over a quarter million dollars building a badass step side C10, right. but left it all patinaed. The license oh, right. plate says Willie G, you know, which was yeah. his oh, uncle's wow. or his grandpa's right. name. And yes, yeah, you know, the stories that come with the vehicles make it for me. I mean, they really do. Agreed. Yeah. So where do you see the channel going at this point? What's what are next steps? Because you've got you've got a great recipe, but you don't seem like a person that rests on your laurels. Not really. No, no. We're 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 about to launch. You know, we've been talking about it off camera, but we're we're about to launch a membership section on the channel, which we've never done anything like that. We've never done the Patreon thing, partially just because we never. I didn't want to add on more work to my life, you know, <laughs> and, and have it maybe not monetize in a sense that, that adds up for me. Um, so we're, we're, we're launching the members thing for the first time because we're going to do a live interaction on a monthly, maybe bi-monthly basis with our audience. Um, that I'm super excited about. And then continuing on with our, you know, normal shoots that we do where we focus on one car and the owner or builder of the vehicle. And you know, the ultimate goal for us, we want to be the biggest car channel that exists. And we're a long ways away from that. I love that. But that's the, that's the goal is like, I want to, you know, if I think supercar Blondie or, or mm. Doug DeMuro probably have the biggest audiences out there. And 
Like I want to crush them. Yeah. Well, well, and you I do. said super Gently. So I do. <laughs> she's doing things like all over the world. And you said you're expanding in, into doing more traveling and things like that too as yep. well. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. We got some travel stuff coming up. We're doing, you know, the whopping big tra tra travel all the way out to Las Vegas, which is... <laughs> 295 right. miles right. away. That's good nice. stuff. Nice. How, how do people, first of all, there's, this is a, a multifold question, but how do people get on your channel? I mean, we were referred to you. Yeah. It's like a secret club, you guys. Yeah. No, seriously. Like I don't want to keep it too club. secret. Well, there you go. There you go. How, how what's your yeah, criteria? YouTube, go to, oh, oh, as far as how to shoot with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, Man, I really missed that question, didn't I? It's uh, discretionary. It's, uh, you know, Maybe it, he doesn't want to talk about be it. Be honest with you. Nah, man, my, our criteria is so easy because I we get e plenty of emails and DMs okay. and stuff. Hey, mm -hmm. what do I do to get on your channel? Well, what do you have? Sure. Okay. It, it really comes down to, for me, it's as is simple it cool? as if I think it's cool. Sure. Okay. It's just that simple. If I think something's badass, <laughs> I want to shoot it. and. The focus leans obviously always towards pro touring and resto mod cars. Mm. And, and that's also because in the first two years, we used to try everything. I mean, we've shot tons of Porsche stuff. We've shot a handful of Lambos and Ferraris and mm. a bunch of JDM stuff. Cause I, yeah. there's a lot of JDM that I think is really sick, but, but you found the market. It just didn't work. You know, okay. it, it's, we even did it recently. We shot an old Hakoska, you know, like a 73, 73 four door skyline. It's built really bitching. I mean, it's a super, super, super cool car. We were like, ah, let's shoot this thing. Doing shit for views. Yep. You know, and and it's not it's not all about the views, but in a certain sense it is because well, because the algorithm is instantly screws you. It's like, well, oh, people don't like this. Well, your viewers want a certain content. And they that's do. kind of what you're trying to they give do. them, right? Is what you're yeah. They do. If yeah. if if I turned on Howard Stern and he was being sure. nice, sure. I would I'd be like, what's what's going <laughs> no, on here? What's you know? on today? I mean, seriously, sure. if I turned on Rogan and he wasn't smoking yeah. a joint and 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 yeah. being Rogan, I, you'd you'd be like, whoa, what, what, what you know? Yeah. So so your viewers have just come to know that, and and it's not like you don't love that content. You do. It's my favorite it part started, of the car like world. Like you said, for with sure. the Mustang and stuff too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the perfect epitome and the example of what you're kind of shooting yeah. and stuff too. And it is my favorite segment of the yeah. car world. I okay. love, I love custom American muscle. Sure. I really do. I love from, we've shot low riders. I dig low riders. They're I rad. Too, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, but it's not, yeah, I know they're sketchy yeah. as hell. Like yeah. it's a total freak show car to me, <laughs> but I tell you what, try to hop in a low rider with a straight face. I mean, like <laughs> biggest smile on my face, bouncing through the streets of Long Beach with this dude named yeah. Long Beach Lloyd, man. Long Beach Lloyd is rad that's awesome. but it's like that's they still the... do that at night too they oh, do and that is so totally. cool I, I know and you don't even realize like people are doing that but yes like friday nights and stuff right i think it's friday night friday, i don't Saturday. know when but they they have a whole they they do constantly. that sounds like fun i know that sounds over, like a over field by trip. like san pedro and stuff like that yep it, and i was like long beach san i was like pedro, this stuff Compton. still happens mm -hmm. i didn't wow. even realize that oh, yeah. in the back of their cars they have like you know ice chests and stuff and they're watching right. them go up and down the street oh, yep wow so much fun please tell us a little bit about cru uh cruising pch cruising pch uh, yeah, yeah totally yeah, yeah. Quar quarantine cruise right oh. Technically. oh yeah started Which it around, really was started around covid time oh yep. big time and it was that was a reason so uh yep. yeah yep and i and i know uh some of those people that you might know like yeah. patrick and ken my boys man <laughs> We're, we're, like I said to you, we're like the fifth Beatle. And for the younger audience that might not know what the hell that means was, you know, the Beatles were four guys and then they had Brian Epstein and Brian Epstein, the manager was considered the fifth Beatle. And so Patrick called me up one day and he's like, dude, you're not going to believe. And, and this was, you got to understand we're content guys, right? Yeah. We need, yeah. we constantly needed to have cars to put on our Instagram for us on YouTube. Yeah. That was, that was the way Patrick grew, grew the Keystone, Keystone channel from exactly. like nothing he, to, yes. I mean, and I watched him do all that too. So, uh, my sister, we've actually, we've built vehicles for Keystone and stuff too. So okay. that's how we've known Patrick is through the aftermarket industry and stuff, but Got it. watching him grow that it was like instant, man. He's a and beast. you're right. Content, content was king. It was just con Dude's and consistency. Beast. Yep. Like you talked about. Yep. Yeah. And Patrick's got a thing like I do on, like on our Instagram, oh, the only, 
the only things I ever put up on our Instagram is stuff that I've personally shot with my phone, yeah. you know? Um, Patrick's been very much a stickler about that, that he doesn't want to be like our friend Garrett, American Muscle HD. Garrett, because there's not as much content where he lives down in Atlanta, yeah. he repurposes a lot of other people's content or he gets people that send him stuff, you know? And I'm not knocking what Garrett does. I mean, yeah. hell, he's got over 2 million followers on his Instagram page. He's doing okay. Yeah. But uh, so Patrick calls me up. He's like, dude, you wouldn't believe it. And this is beginning of quarantine. There's nobody out, right? People are like, you know, sanitizing their grocery it, yeah. bags before they bring yes. them in their friggin' houses yeah. and stuff. This was when it was psycho lockdown. It was, yeah. But it wasn't illegal to get in your car and go drive. Yep. So Jason, Big Sean, and Heck went for a cruise one day down in Huntington Beach. Why not? Three guys putting around completely empty streets. Patrick calls me, dude, you got to come down. We're going to do this again. And it's going to be rad. There's going to be like 20 cars. <laughs> like, cool. I might come Patrick. I'm no, you don't understand orange County. Yeah. I don't understand orange County. I only friggin' grew up there, buddy. <laughs> so then the next one happened and, and there was, and we're going to meet in a mall parking lot. Well, this Is, was before that. that was, okay. This was way before the mall. <laughs> okay. This was when it was like, Let's that meet up a, at this gas station. That was about when station. I heard about it, was, was the mall Yeah, the time. mall was the fourth, <laughs> yeah. that was the fourth one we okay. did. <laughs> so there was the first one where it's three guys, yeah. and Patrick asks Jason, and by the way, Jason's like, you know, kind of a hardcore car guy, weak to wicked Jason. He, he, oh, know. Scudelary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he actually asked, he said, hey man, can you get out of the way? I want to get a picture of that truck. <laughs> and Jason was like, it was my truck. And he's like, yeah, cool, get out of the way. Get I need a way. picture. This is so Patrick, right? And... So then he calls us up after the next one and he said, dude, there was like 30 cars that showed up and it was raining. You guys should come down for, to get some content. Yeah. So me and Ken both showed up to yeah. Ken and I. And Ken Johnson, yeah. We Love showed up, too. we showed up to the next one, which was technically the third cruise. There okay. was probably somewhere like 65, 70 Ooh, cars. Boy. I was like, wow, yeah. this is rad. This is posts for like the yep. next week. Right. And, uh, and then Ken and I, talked to Patrick. We talked to Jason. Heck, we're like, Hey, you guys want us to put the word out on this? Cause at the time, you know, Patrick didn't have that many followers on Keystone yet. No, I think, he was I just think starting. He, it was, it was growing quickly, but it was really early though. He, still, he only had yeah. like a few thousand followers yeah. at that time with Keystone. Yeah. Um, so Ken and I both went, Hey, you guys want us to put the well, word out Ken, on this? So Ken also has a couple classics of it, daily yep, and they're like million followers mm -hmm. too. And stuff. Yep. So and yeah. at the time he's he I think at the time he still had muscle Kings, which was yeah. pretty big. Now yep, he's yep. got, and God bless Ken. Like, how does anyone pull this one off? He got at Ken oh, no, they, they <laughs> on Instagram. They, he's got, it's, at it's Ken. just Ken. Yeah, correct. He got that. They like offered it to him. Oh. It was, oh no, it was. And that was like super I give him shit all on. the time. I'm like, who'd you pay <laughs> off for that one, dude? Like, you're telling me you're the Ken's only Ken in buddy. the world. On. You're the <laughs> only Ken in the world that wanted at yeah. Ken on Instagram. Yeah. That's and by the way. It was dope. a long time ago. Yeah. I remember talking about no, this at Applebee's with him. No, but it's fairly new. He hasn't. Oh my shop. God. But he hasn't had at Ken for years. At Ken is only like a year old. No. You're, it's like yes. three years old or something. No, at Ken K. No, no, no. Because yeah. he had he had Muscle Kings that he was pushing hard. Then yeah, he was yeah, pushing yeah. Classics Daily yeah. hard. And then it's been all. He had boosted Nova before he had at Ken. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, I know Ken really. I, I, I'm a geek about this okay, stuff. We I'll keep text up. Him right. we, we'll put him on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Call Ken. Hey, Siri, call at Ken. Yeah. No, I'm, never call mind. Ken. Leave me alone. No, go away. <laughs> No, 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 don't go, no, no. Now she's calling he somebody would, else. He wouldn't care. No, she she was calling someone else. Oh, that's she, not like, good. it's some, you know. It's your friend. It's my it's pal my friend. Siri, you know. We, we hang, we hang. Yeah. I mean, he might be at Ken, but I hang out with Siri. <laughs> so, so that was how the cruise started, was, was yeah. three guys turns into 30, turns into about 65. It just Ken it, and I helped put the word out each time. Like, all, well, like, Ken and I helped put the word yeah. out. The very next one was the one where it was where we met up at Westminster Mall. Yep, yep. I remember that's where because the mall was shut that's down. That's where I got like the the invite and stuff, and I was like, "We're meeting at a mall to do what?" Yeah, because the mall was totally <laughs> shut down. So you yeah. have this huge parking lot. Yeah. We probably had somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 cars show up. We went, "Wow, this is really, really yeah. cool." And then it became this once a month, let's do this, let's do this. And the, I think it was the, 
The fifth one was where Vicious got hit. And I want to say that one, we had probably 2,200 cars show up. Wow. It was bonkers. And now it's gotten to the point where, honestly, I mean, a, a low attended one will be like seven or 800 cars that show up. Oh, yeah. A big one, like the last one was the, the third anniversary of it. We had, I'd say probably 1,800 cars show up. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah, amazing. I did the one during Christmas, and it, it had to be over 2,000 easily. It's amazing. Yeah. And for us, for our channel, it's been, you know, yeah. it's been the best scouting ground in the world. The is con- like, oh, the content. I mean, yeah, obviously. Cars bottomless. come from all over. They're yeah. coming from Vegas and all over well, Southern I think better believe and stuff. It. Yeah. I and think outside. we need to go. I mean, you got people coming in I'll from all over. I'll bring you next time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my car's running. I can bring my own. You should. You should. You should really come down. It'd, yeah, it'd blow your mind. No, it's great. It's all car people, and and it's everything. There, there was a uh, you know Volkswagens there too. I mean, it, oh, like yeah. the the content. It's all over the place. It's really cool. Yeah, it's just. I mean, that's what I love about car shows and stuff too. Is when you can get everyone there. I mean, kind of like what yeah. you were trying to do with your channel. You said too is like kind of make it a little more diversified where yeah. everyone's there. But yep. You get Sometimes the people that f- only go towards that one yeah. thing. I get it. You just it. stay, yeah. ri- stay yeah. on your path. and it's yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. We could sit here. I could talk to you for hours. Yeah, In fact, yeah. I know. We text, we call, <laughs> we do all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, I was texting sure. you last night on Paul Hollywood's The Big Continental Road Trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the grocer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have to save it for... You have I no know, idea. Right? You like, do what? have an idea. It's the I'm Mercedes limo. No, you know, I know exactly. I'm just, yeah, I know, totally. <laughs> the Pullman. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a Pullman, Pullman 600. They were calling it a grocer. Some it, it, Berlin. I don't know. You know, a 300 Oh, grocer. they would have a whole different name for it, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the... Like they call the... Oh yeah, the G wagon. Because I'm fr- my buddy's Chrome cars, German guys, right? So they always clue me in on how you're supposed to pronounce certain German vehicles. Mm-hmm. Like for one, they they hate when you call it Audi. It's got to be Audi. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You got to be a little pissed off <laughs> okay. when you say it too. But uh, we. <laughs> Awesome. Not snorting, pissed off. I was hoping somebody was gonna snort. We gotta snort. But like a G wagon, they call it a, a gay. G- don't say gay. G klasse. G klasse. Yeah. Like G class. But they say, but they almost say it like gay. Gay klasse. Gay klasse. Gay. See, I instantly get it. G- <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. Yes. That's why we call it. That's why we. Know. That's actually could, why we. I think we could sit here all day and do that. We just demonstrated why we call it a G wagon, right? Too yeah. funny. Oh my god! Thank you so much for for. I say thank you to you all the time. Thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for being a part of this. This is amazing, oh. Teresa. Oh, that was awesome. Design Muse. Are we done? Is that what it's you're saying? Time. I feel like we could it's keep talking time. about all That's this. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna have to. We're gonna. <laughs> we're mean, gonna have to follow him around. I feel like around. there's another episode coming here because I, I really so. want to know about yes, like the next thing that's happening and stuff yeah. like that. Like yeah. you're talking yeah. about. So. Well, put me in front of a mic and I'll babble all day long. So. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. I feel like that's all we do behind the scenes most of the time anyway. And stuff, that's so. amazing. Awesome. It Thank is. you again. Love totally. So much. You're welcome. You guys, great. this has been High Octane Hustle. <laughs> I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And this is neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, dude. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't want to snort again. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay.